first part of my presentation is going to be about um, three new realities um, that are uh, certainly changing after we come out of the recession. The understanding that skill demands really are changing this economy, I'll speak to that point. Um, a signature piece of Governor Fallon's initiative is an understanding around this new minimum, that just a traditional high school education is not enough to get access to the middle class. Um, and then I'll touch briefly on the fewer resources that we have to address these challenges. So new skill demands. Traditionally, we've looked at these three different categorizations of occupations. In high skill, we know well from managerial, professional, finance, medicine. All of these occupations require highly educated workers that have critical thinking and analytical ability. This is what these occupations have in common. And it requires higher levels of education to be able to do those tasks and that work. On the opposite end, there are service-oriented occupations, food, preparation, cleaning. What we know that these have in common is they generally don't require education beyond high school. Um, they also are physically demanding work that we can't do with machines and computers. Human beings often need to do these jobs. Which leaves in the middle a wide category of what we used to call blue-collar jobs. Sales, administrative, transportation, material, movement, extraction, construction. We're familiar with these jobs and we also know that these are the jobs um, that require routine tasks that are procedural or repetitive. And they're going away. Really, these jobs are anything that can be done with a computer or that can be done by a machine. And as we lose these jobs, it's having a significant impact on our economy. So this chart is taken from a, a paper that was done by the Kansas City Federal Reserve. And you can see the change that we witnessed from 1983 to 2011. High skill occupations are growing enormously across the country. At the same time, our low-skill occupations, our population grows as service-oriented part of our economy is also growing a little bit. At the cost in the middle here, the traditional middle-skill occupations, this is why we hear a lot of conversation about how do individuals move from this lower set of occupations and jump this now larger chasm to the high-skill occupations. And what does our economy look like if we lose that section of our, of our jobs? This is a huge structural shift that we're trying to manage to deal with. So the way you'll hear economists talk about middle skill jobs or middle income jobs is that if we're left with just this high and low skill occupations, we're really splitting now those technical jobs, the ones that still require critical analytical ability, the jobs that computers and machines can't yet do. The new middle skill occupations, you'll hear this term, some college. So now if we have to go beyond high school, how do individuals get some level of college education that needs to, are to include all forms of workforce certifications on the job training, ways in which employers engage directly with high school graduates, even within high school. This isn't a straight line to say it's beyond high school. There's a lot of programs that are training individuals in high school to come out with certificates. But this new middle skill occupation is how we're thinking about this challenge. This is the new minimum chart, and this is how it's played an effect over the last several decades. In 1965, you can see there about 79% of people in the economy, that's 8 out of 10, had a high school diploma and nothing more. And that's what they needed for their job. So if you take 10 people on average, 8 of them have a high school diploma that are working in the economy, one of them has something more than a high school diploma, and one of them has a four-year degree or more. That was our economy in 1965. All the way down to 2011 or 2013, you can see how that shifted to be almost equal. Now only you know, three to four people in, that, in our economy today can get by and get a job with just a high school diploma. Everyone else has to move into our education system and spend more time getting further levels of education. That's how our economy is shifting. But more importantly than that, this group of high, high, those that stop with a high school diploma, it is getting harder and harder to get a decent wage with just that level of education. So in 1973, about 60% of those that had a high school diploma could make at least $25,000. And over time, you can see by 2011, we've almost cut that in half, where 36% of people that have only a high school diploma can make $25,000. And today, 25 grand is certainly not enough to raise a large family, to do a lot of other things, to engage in the education you need if you want to jump out of this level of educational attainment. So this is a slide I don't often share data that's just for one state. Um, but Oklahoma's done a great job looking and digging more into this information because every state has some unique aspects to it. This bottom bar here is 2010. It's the educational attainment level of everybody in Oklahoma. So in the blue are those that have a high school diploma. Red are those that have gone beyond high school to get some level of additional certification or a two-year degree. 
and the green is the bachelor's and the purple is a four year degree. The bar above it are all the new jobs that Oklahoma is going to have between 2010 and 2020. And very quickly you can see the misalignment. And this is the challenge as Governor Fallon speaks to her state. We need to move more and more individuals from the blue into the red, more individuals from the red and so on. We have to realign with our current economy and I'm thinking about it in terms of education. So because I'm moving quick, I'll, I'll keep going through some of these slides and talk just briefly about the fewer resources. There's lots that we know about how costly tuition is, how tuition's going up, about the school debt that we all have now that we're trying to pay off and how important it is to get a, a good wage job to pay off your debt to get to school. But another chart I wanted to share is just the workforce system in general. So some, this chart here uh, starts in 1986, and this is all um, federal funding coming out of the Department of Labor that's uh, paid to our different states and funnels through to take care of not just workforce training, but unemployment insurance and all those services that we use in that particular system. So 1986 was about $12.5 billion. And if I draw a straight line from 1986 on, you can see only once did we reach that level of, employment, of funding again. The next two bumps that are in the early 2000s and in 2010, the, those are our recessions. That's the tech bubble that burst in the early 2000s, and that's the, the 2007-2009 recession. It's interesting, too, that all the money that we spent in the Recovery Act, as much as we talked about this huge infusion of funds, that funding still didn't get us back to the level that we had in our workforce system um, in 1986. And in fact, if we were to assume that those recessions didn't happen, and that we had level funding through that time, and flatten those peaks out, you can see the downward trend in our workforce funding. That federally we're spending less and less every year um, on funding the system. That's not to say that's where we're, that I know where we're going to go in the future, but that's been the trend for the last decade. And this is the same story across all of our different systems. I chose one to point out, but every system is dealing with fewer resources and have to be more efficient with those funds. And this is the same story across all of our different systems. I chose one to point out, but every system is dealing with fewer resources and have to be more efficient with those funds.